Hi, and welcome to Sparkle Chart. Today, I'm going to show you how to create a quick journal page using a negative image. This is so much fun. I'm going to use a stamp from Postmodern Design. This one's called Saw. Some of the Lindy's Stamp Gang Magicals, because you can't live without them. Some Mask It from Express It. I have a couple of bird images I'm going to use to create a mask. And I mentioned my Lindy Stamp Gang Magicals, didn't I? Because they're gorgeous. <laughs> now, I'm using a journal with beautiful watercolour paper. And the first thing I need to do is trial my birds. So I've got a few that I think might suit as an image, but I'm just sort of having a look and seeing how they fit on the page and how they look. Because sometimes it works on one page and not another. I think for this one, I'm going to use that cute little blue wren. It's about the right size and I, I just like the look of it. So I've grabbed some of the mask it. You'll notice it's got two sides. One is the backing sheet and the other is the clear sheet that will stick to your project. Now you need to draw the image or transfer it onto the top of this clear sheet. So don't draw it on the back, draw it on the clear sheet. You might need to pull them apart just to make sure you've got the right one. Now the reason this is so important is because the image that you transfer onto this will be in the right direction. If you drew it on the back, you would have a reverse of your image. So not quite what you're after. Now I've just used uh, a permanent marker to trace around the image of the bird on a light box and then I've carefully cut this out. Now because my watercolour paper is not completely smooth, I might get a little bit of bleeding under the image, but that happens. You just have to deal with it if it does. This is about the right size. I love the way it looks on the page. I think I'm going to put the other stamp sort of about eye level with the bird. But the great thing about the mask is that if you don't like the position it's in the first time, you can just peel it off and put it back down again. Now, when you do stick it down, when it's finally in the right position, make sure that you've made really good contact with the paper and this will prevent bleeding as much as possible. Now, to get started, I've just added some water to my watercolour palette. You can see it's a little bit messy, but what's on there is alcohol ink, so it won't make any difference to the colours I'm using. So I'm going to add a little of the Cafe Olay Magical, and this one is a beautiful creamy colour, and it doesn't have any sparkle, the Cafe Olay. It's just a really nice flat. I've also got Steampunk Sepia, and this one is one of the sparklies, so just for a touch, just for a little hint of sparkle. Now I have some Tiffany Lou Blue, and it's one of my favourites still. It's such a pretty colour. And a little Ocean Breeze Blue. Now this is one of the flat magicals, and if it's called a flat magical, it means it doesn't have any shimmer. Now you can see that these are watercolour powders. All I'm doing is adding them to the water, letting the dye ink mix and dissolve in the water. And for the final colour, I have Time Travel Teal, which is a beautiful blue colour. So, just give all of your little magicals a stir to activate all the colours and make sure that that dye powder is dissolved. And then you can just start painting. Now, I didn't really have a plan for this. I know that I wanted my little bird to look like it was standing on either a branch or some soil. But the fun here is just randomly laying some colours over onto your journal page and just having a play. If it's too dark, you go over with a bit of water. If it's too light, you add a bit more colour and just have fun. So I've started with the Ocean Breeze Blue and now I'm adding a little bit of the Time Travel Teal. It is just the most beautiful colour. But because I'm adding it into another colour, it's not quite as dark as it would be by itself. But uh, you, get the, you, you get the idea. It's just really pretty. Now, if I'm adding a colour to one side, I make sure I add a little bit of it to the other side as well, even if it's just sort of flecks or spots. Now this is the Cafe Olay. You can see how beautiful and creamy this is. Uh, so it doesn't blend quite as well with the blue as the non-cream colours. So the Flat Fabios, some of them have a creamy base um, and others are just the pure dye, but this one has a cream base. I love the colour. It's beautiful and soft um, and you can just do such great things with it. So at this point I've sort of started to sort of kind of make the shape of either a branch or ground. I haven't quite figured out which one of those things it will be yet. I'll figure that out later. But right now I'm just having some fun and playing. 
So adding some watery layers of colour, adding some thicker layers of colour, adding a few splats. You can see I'm just keeping it really loose. Uh, if anything's not dark enough, I just go back in with a bit more of my mixed magicals. If anything looks a little bit too much like it's got a specific edge or a bit too clean, add another colour in there like I've just done. Now, you can add as watery a colour as you might like. I'm going back in with the time travel teal now just to sort of darken that up a little, um, add a bit more drama and depth to the look of things. And now I'm just going in with some water. Um, now I didn't clean off my brush beforehand so it's quite got a pale blue colour and I'm using it just to sort of bleed out some of those colours so that they're a bit more softly blended, um, a little bit more watery so that when I flick into them like I'm doing now I get these beautiful splashes of colour without being dots, it sort of bleeds and blends. Basically I'm having a whole lot of fun. <laughs> so again a bit of a watery wash and then add a bit of colour into it. Um, I've kind of decided that it'll be ground at this point, I think, but I'm leaving it fairly loose so it's sort of open to interpretation. It was also looking a little bit too rectangular, so I'm making sure I add a little bit of watery colour and bring out those edges just a bit, just so it doesn't look quite so square. Um, I just wanted it to look a little bit more organic, a bit more natural, a little bit less controlled. Um, yeah, so I'm doing that by adding some water and some watery bits into it. So it sort of blends and flows and does its own thing. A little bit less me, a little bit more the paint. Now, this is looking fantastic. I'm really happy about here, uh, which is usually where I ruin it somehow. But it doesn't always happen. <laughs> so there's always ways to fix things if you do happen to ruin it somehow. Um, now this is the time for the stamping. Now this is really cool. So have a check. Check this out. Uh, it turned out really interesting and really well and it made a beautiful stamped image. Now I could have left it at any point but being me I had to keep fiddling with it and I really like the finished result. I've used the steampunk sepia and the time travel teal to add colour on here. And I'm adding it onto a stamp that I've inked with Versamark ink and this just makes it stick. So if you spritz the stamp with water it activates those magicals and you can stamp with them. Now I've added a lot of water and I'm adding water to the actual paper so that it bleeds. If you don't want it to bleed, don't add water to the paper and add a little bit less to the stamp when you're spraying it. But for me, that's the effect I was after. That beautiful bleedy kind of effect. Now you could absolutely leave it looking like that but I decided I'd like something a little bit paler so it wasn't competing with the bird. So I've spritzed it with a little water to make the colours run and I'm just going to blot that with a paper towel. Now what the blotting does is it sort of cements the pattern that you've created and takes off a layer of water and colour. So you get a beautiful pattern but it'll be quite pale just like as you can see here. Now I've still got a little bit of that stamped image so I'm going to use that to my advantage and do something really cool. So I've got out my little um, stamp guide just to make sure that when I stamp over it, it's in the same spot. But sometimes I will stamp slightly off um, the original image so you kind of get a shadow look. That's pretty cool too. So using the same um, stamp, go over with an archival ink so you get that beautiful soft text over the top of that beautiful soft background. So I loved the way this looks. Now I'm just emphasizing my ground with a pencil um, and the back of the bird just to sort of add a little shadow. So I'm using both blue and brown watercolor pencils from, now I don't know how to say this properly, Albrecht Dura. Um, and I'm gonna add a little of my Copic Multiliner over my stamped lettering just to make it really pop. This is almost done for me. I've just added a tiny little doodle behind the bird, just something really soft to help draw the focus to it. And you can see that that stamping and the combination of the archival ink and the Copic Multiliner, that is just, doesn't it look elegant and pretty? I think so, I love it. Um, and because I put the paper towel over the background, it's kept the look of those particular sort of colors. Now that bird is great. I'm loving the edges, I'm loving the color bleeds. Really happy at this point, but as you can see on the bird's tail, it looks like a little bit of that colour has snuck underneath my mask. 
Yep, there it is. Okay, so I've just got a tiny little color bleed. So I'll just need to fix that up with a white paint pen. And just so it doesn't look strange, I'm going to add a little bit of white paint pen onto my doodled leaves as well, just to sort of help draw the eye and focus away from my little cover up there. Now, no art is perfect, but for me, that page has turned out beautifully and I just love the way it looks. So I hope this has given you an idea for a really quick, free, flowy journal page and um, give it a try. It's a lot of fun. I hope you've enjoyed watching this and don't forget to check back here on my channel next week for another new video from Sparkle Tart. That's me. Bye. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love you to give me a like and if you'd like to see more from Sparkle Tart, subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a product list below the video in the description and you can connect with me via YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter or Google+. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.